Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout. This here is where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with, and I will pick one of the top rated comments for the next episode. Today's top comment comes from somebody with the handle Steve the Goddamn Menu, and he recommends the German Pioneer Loadout with the Madsen MG low weight variant as our primary weapon, the P08 pistol for our sidearm, a limpet charge, a repair tool, an incendiary grenade, and the shovel for melee. He then goes on to say, you're playing as part of the German Pioneers, an elite unit that specializes in demolition and construction on the battlefield. Your shovel, repair tool, and limpet are all used for this purpose. The Pioneers were also known to have used experimental weapons such as the Madsen MG and flamethrower. The incendiary grenade will act as a flamethrower. Throw it into a bunker or house and as the enemies run away from the flames, quickly deploy the Madsen to cut them down. Now it was refreshing to see a highly upvoted comment uh, asking me to use a weapon that just isn't as popular in Battlefield. The Madsen MG is one of the lesser popular support weapons in the game, and the support class is one of the lesser popular classes in the game. So the Madsen MG really doesn't get a lot of playtime compared to some of the other super popular guns of this game. So it was just a nice refresher to try something else out for a change. The Madsen MG is an interesting machine gun. If you're having trouble differentiating it from the other machine guns, just think of it as the one with the big ugly magazine coming out the top of the weapon that makes it kind of hard to see your enemies sometimes. It has an unfortunately low rate of fire of 540 rounds per minute with a maximum damage of 23, but the damage drop off isn't bad. It only goes down to 17.5. So this weapon becomes a little bit more effective at medium range. Unfortunately, it doesn't really have the accuracy to back up its damage per second at extreme ranges. So basically medium range is your best bet with this weapon and you can still hit fire in close range to try and eke out a few kills. The low weight variant has some of the best accuracy recovery. So it generally favors burst firing and it also has a bipod so you can be pretty accurate at range once you're deployed. I really can't stand bipod gameplay for the most part though, just because uh, you telegraph your position with a machine gun. There's plenty of tracer rounds. And so if you're sitting still on top of that, you are just asking to get headshotted by a sniper, which will happen often. So my recommendation is when you deploy that bipod or looking over a ledge, use it momentarily, then change positions as fast as possible. Sitting in one location and mowing people down can work on occasion, and I do try and make it work whenever possible, but it's also a very good way to get yourself killed quickly. Now, the effective range of this weapon can definitely be extended when you have that bipod deployed, but I certainly wouldn't pick a duel with a sniper. Use it to take on medics at range and assault classes and even other support classes, and you should be just fine. Now, of course, one of the biggest challenges with machine guns in Battlefield 1 is just their damage output. It's not going to be high and also their accuracy and basically recoil at longer ranges makes it hard for them to deal with far range targets. So you really are limited to medium range and even then your damage output isn't going to be substantial. So you have to try and lure your enemy or engage your enemy at that range and be aware of the fact that you're probably not going to out damage a lot of people. So you sort of really do need to play a supporting role with this class. You can't go head to head with many of the classes in the game. You have to be there for your teammates. Now, as far as this loadout goes, it was a decent loadout. My only problem was that the repair wrench was fine thematically, but having ammo or being able to resupply myself and teammates with ammo is so much more useful than that repair wrench, unless I'm playing uh, specifically to try and keep a tank driver alive. If say a buddy of mine's driving a tank and they need somebody to help rep them, then I'll spawn in with the repair tool. But otherwise, the uh, ammo box is just so darn important. Also, I would give up the limpet charge before I give up the ammo box. You need to spam fire with this class and you need to expend a lot of bullets to take down other enemy players at further ranges because of the accuracy issues you will be having with this gun. So uh, just again, the ammo box is so freaking important. And towards the end of this video, I did switch up to running this class with the ammo box and it made a huge change in my actual performance overall. The Madsen MG isn't that frustrating of a weapon when you know you can spam fire it and you don't have to be as insanely accurate and make every bullet count. So having that ammo box is a very
very big benefit to the way that you can actually play with this class. Otherwise, you're going to conserve your ammo and not go for as many medium range or long range targets just because you don't want to risk not being able to get the kill. That's not really a concern when you have the ammo box. You start taking a lot more shots and thus you'll end up getting a lot more kills. I did end up fixing the anti-aircraft sights to this weapon. They do make it look a little bit goofy, but it's just sort of my preferred style of aiming for the machine guns. As for the incendiary grenades, I found them to be pretty darn useful. I am incredibly annoyed by these when playing against them, and I had a feeling I was annoying a lot of enemy players, catching them on fire and using them to either disperse rooms, get enemies to run away, or just flat out kill my enemy. If you don't, go prone at the proper time once you catch on fire in Battlefield 1, then uh, it can be lights out very quickly. That's something that I hope most players know, but if you didn't know that, uh, if you go prone after catching on fire and stay still, the fire will go out very quickly. If you run around quickly after catching on fire, it'll only exacerbate the situation. I have a feeling there's a decent amount of players who don't know this because I was getting incendiary grenade kills, probably even on some opponents that didn't necessarily need to die from those incendiary grenades had they dropped to the ground fast enough. Now here I find myself on the Suez map playing Conquest. This is one of the more infantry intensive maps that you can play on Conquest. It's a great one for just racking up kills or testing out a weapon loadout if you would like to. And uh, the Madsen was doing much better. I also switched over to using the ammo box instead of the repair tool at this point. And I was just able to use my machine gun so much more liberally. And I ended up getting way, way more kills and going on more kill streaks. Now, as for the other compliments of this loadout, the PO8 pistol is perfectly usable. It's not my favorite. It's, it's really hard to compare anything to the M1911. That is my sidearm of choice, and here I managed to get a, a limpet kill on this light tank, which is a nice way to finish off this kill streak. But uh, as far as sidearms go, the POA is perfectly usable, but if you're going for a try-hard loadout or something that's just going to have the most kill ability or the best killing potential, the POA is not my first choice. I would certainly pick the 1911 over it. Now, I've already mentioned that I like the incendiary grenade. It's a perfectly usable grenade, probably not quite as useful as the frag grenade in general. It all depends on what exactly you're going for, or what you're trying to do with this loadout. I think the incendiary grenade is an incredibly effective way of stopping people from entering certain areas. So um, playing on, say, the operations game mode defensively would be a great place to use the incendiary grenade. But if you're playing on conquest or just sort of more random maps, then I would say it's probably a little bit less useful than the frag grenade in general. As for melee weapons, the shovel is a great one. It's very funny to kill people with a shovel in this game. It's also got a great damage model, but uh, I do prefer the hatchet overall because it has the added ability to actually break barbed wire, which I end up using quite a bit. Now, I actually did a video on the uh, best melee weapons in the game and what I think the best melee weapon is overall, and that is actually the hatchet. But if you wanna watch that video, you can understand exactly why as it does come with some properties that I think make it uniquely one of the better melee weapons in the game. And one of them is being able to break that barbed wire, which is just something that I've become so um, used to being able to use. It's There's no point in taking the extra tiny bit of damage of running through barbed wire, getting stuck up on it. You can just break it with your melee weapon very quickly and it opens up some new flanking routes for you. Now, overall, the Madsen MG is a totally usable machine gun. It's certainly not the slowest firing machine gun out there, but then again, it's also not the fastest. It's hard to have anything really stack up to the BAR once you're used to playing with the Browning automatic rifle. It is just such a good machine gun, a decent one uh, for pretty much any situation you find yourself in. But the Madsen MG does have a little bit more ammo, even though it is a slower rate of fire. It can be more usable for taking on multiple targets before you need to reload. Now, personally, from an aesthetic standpoint, I don't like the Madsen just because of that giant magazine in the center of the screen. I can do decently with this weapon and even have fun with this weapon but overall if I had to just pick a machine gun to use I would pick one that didn't have the giant magazine in the center of the screen I, it's it's historically accurate it's the way that the weapon was designed I just personally don't care for it but the loadout itself is actually still pretty darn decent aside from that repair tool I've swapped that out for an ammo box and you've got a decent loadout that's a lot of fun to play anyway that pretty much wraps it up for this episode don't forget to leave your comments for next week's episode and i'll see you guys next time this is level cap signing off